Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In today's video we're going to be creating a spawn system for our zombie enemies. In the last few episodes we made our enemy, they have animations, they can attack us and so on. And now it'd be nice if we could spawn them in. First what we need is a prefab of the enemy just so we can spawn him. So I'll go to my prefabs, human, and I'll drag my enemy from the scene uh, to here or from the hierarchy to our project panel. And now we have that. Now what we gotta do is create some spawn points, so I'll go ahead and create an empty object, and this one will be a parent object for all the spawn points, sorry. I'll call it spawners, and I'll maybe set it to 000. zero, zero. And then uh, I will create another empty object in it, call it spawner. And this one uh, I can move wherever I need it, so the first one will be here I guess. Uh, I'll take like five or something. You can choose your own number. I'll put one here. That's four, and that's five right there. Right, so that that looks good. If you want to see them in the scene, just go ahead, click this icon right here, and then just pick one that you need, and you can see that uh, they're visible in the scene right now. And now we just need the new script. So I'll go create a C sharp script, and this one will be called Spawner. Open it up. In here first we'll need a way to represent all our spawners in the script. A really great way of doing that is using arrays. If you go to the Unity scripting API you will see that arrays allow you to store multiple objects in a single variable and it will show you a way to create them here, an example. So let's do that. I'll make it public just so we can see it in the inspector for now. And the way you create a array is just you give it a uh, variable type. We need a game object because we need the spawners. Then you put these guys, I don't know what their name is in English. Hell, I don't even know them in Croatian. And then you give them a name, so mine will be spawners. And you can't uh, assign these uh, right here, you need to do it in the start method. And the way we're going to do that is by using a for loop. Before we do that, we just need to tell it that the spawners uh, equals to new game object, and then we need to give it the size of the array. So basically, what we do is set the spawners to have five variables, and if we go ahead and attach the spawner script to our spawners parent object, and you can see if we play the game that now we have five empty objects right here and basically what we need to do in the script is just take these and uh, place them in here. Also take note that element 0 is the first element and element 1 is the second element, element 2 is the third element and so on. So if you want to know what a for loop is, there's uh, just a quick google search will do. Basically it allows you to do s some things over and over again before a condition is met. So basically what we need to do is start it with 4 and then we need to create a variable that we'll use to meet the condition. I'll just make it a int i because integer i makes sense and then I'll set it to 0. Now when we start the for loop we'll create this integer and it will be 0. And then we want to check if i is smaller or less than spawners dot length which in this case is 5 because we just set it here then we want to go i++. i++ basically means i plus equals 1. It increases it by 1. Let me try and explain this. So we create an integer i which is 0 and then we check if i which in this case is 0 is less than 5. If it is we do the code and then we tell it i++ and then i is 1. Checks uh, for i again. 1 is less than 5. Does the code again. Uh, now i is 2, then it goes so on and so on until it gets to 5. When it gets to 5, uh, or 6 actually, then uh, we stop the um, loop. Hopefully I explained that good enough. What we want to do here is go spawners. And then we need to access one of the game objects in the spawner. We're going to do i, so when we run it the first time we're going to access the first uh, variable in the array. When we run it the second time, the i will be 1, so we will access the second game object in the array. And we'll set it to be equal to transform, which is this game object. And this game object, in this case, is our sp spawner's uh, parent. 
And now we need to tell it to set this first spawner to be equal to the array's first variable. A really handy way of doing that is using a function called transform.getChild. And you can see the example right here. So we tell it the transform get child and then uh, the number of the child or the order, I guess. So we go transform that get child and then we to tell it which one we need the I one. So the first variable in the uh, array will be set to the first child in the uh, parent game object. And then we also need to give it the game object right here like that. Right now, if we play the game, you can see that we enter the game and all the variables in our array get set to the spawners. All we have to do now is just pick a random one and then spawn the enemy. So I'll go ahead and I'll create a private void spawn enemy. And what I'll do in here, I'll go ahead and instantiate. And now we need to give it the game object that we want to instantiate. So I'll just create a private game object right here they'll be called enemy and then I'll instantiate the enemy or actually it won't be private it'll be public or serialized field both of those will work you can see if you go to the unity API that object that instantiate takes in a few variables you can only give it this one but then it will just spawn it wherever or you can give it a position and a rotation which we will do so we'll tell it to spawn the enemy at the location of one of the spawners. Now how you get a random one will be spawners. We access the array and then we, t we need to tell it which number to get. For now, let's just do one. And then we'll go dot transform dot position. Also, we need to tell it the rotation. So we'll go spawners. Same thing again. We'll give it one. We'll go transform dot rotation. Very simple. And close it off. Now, we, we actually don't want to get one, we just want to pick a random one. And the way you do that is go random dot range. So it gets one random from the range, and the range is actually a function that we need to uh, use. And it takes in, you can see, it flows random range, it takes in a minimum and a maximum. The minimum is always zero here. And the maximum will be the spawners array dot length. So the size of the array, which is five. And then we can just take this, copy it and paste it into the rotation. Hopefully this makes a little bit of sense. So we pick a random one and then we get the randoms one transform and position. Now, hopefully you can see what's wrong here. Uh, we're getting a random one, both for the position and the rotation. So we'll spawn an enemy in with the position of the one game object but the rotation of the other game object aka our spawner so what we can do is just in here just create a quick integer that'll be called a uh, spawner id i guess we can call it like that and then set that to be equal to uh, a random dot range and in here what so every time we call the method we're going to get one spawner id and then we can uh, just put it in here we're doing the same thing that we did before, but we're just making sure that the same ID is in the rotation and the position. Before we get started, we just have to go to our prefabs and drag the enemy into our spawner script to assign the variable. And you can see that uh, we can actually run this the, the method. That's my fault. Let's go to the private uh, void update and we'll just create a quick uh, test uh, function to to see whenever we press input that get key down and the key code dot t for example that's kind of for testing and then we'll just spawn enemy if we play the game press t you will see that the enemy should spawn at one of those and you can see that it did he's right there if you go closer to him he, he'll start chasing us if you press t again you can see that another enemy spawns at that point. And basically what we'll do in the next episode is make this a bit more automated. Just so, for example, an enemy spawns every 5 seconds or so. And then you can increase that depending on the length of the game or something. So that's it for this episode. Now I have to go to school because I'm already late. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. You can go follow me on my social media. Support me on my Patreon if you're that kind. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye.